Beautiful day for a stroll, isn't it? Today we are exploring the Saugus River and all the unmarked locations across it. Usually it is guarded by Yalgwa. If you want to get to Lynn Woods, you'll probably have to pass by him. Uh, not only is there one up at the top of the river here, but there's normally one on down. But along the way, we'll find plenty of unmarked locations, stashes, and any other we reference. I can throw in, is that a glowing mongrel and a rabid yellow guy it is <laughs> the fat man out my character pre oh my goodness there is a marler queen i have never seen you here before this this is a first so if you're here and you see this and you're like oh that's a bit of a problem which it is you can always run over to this little soldier here and get yourself some explosives it's guaranteed to have a good few grenades in it and uh, we thank him for his service also, whilst you're here, you can probably see plenty of the unmarked locations up in the hill, like Car Henge. Now, the thing about this henge that I'm not, or not, not Car Henge, Car uh, Tree. Uh, the thing about it is, someone told me the tree grew up through, like, a collection of cars and brought them up. Someone else suggested a behemoth, you know, threw them up there and, like, kind of impaled them. 50-50. Mm, I'm not too sure. Could have been either, really. Uh, there's also a little camp. Now, the thing is, when you go near the camp and you get the food, a few rad scorpions pop out and uh, give you a little bit of a fright. Now, carrying on down, there is a little picnic table that has a hidden bunker. For many years, I didn't know this existed, so it certainly came as a shock to me that when you activate one of the nearby, I think it's that radio tower, you get a distress signal, brings you over here to this wee camp, you're like, oh, novice cooler and a cooking station, awesome. But did you know if you go through here, you can get yourself into a wee bunker. Inside, there's supplies, plenty of aluminum, aluminium cans for the taking, coolers, meds, and uh, it's just a general, really, really good bunker for you to find. Uh, not to mention, oh, empty wooden crates, that's a pity. I suppose they did... Uh, I'd imagine the crates are to signify that there was food in here at one point, and they did survive for a period of time. The meds are the more important part, though. Returning to the surface, we can go back to the river. Now, where this leads to, it actually leads uh, all the way down here, passing by the likes of Lim Woods, Breakheart Banks, the Slog. Of course it reaches Saugus Ironworks, and then it kind of ends uh, about the Revere Satellite Array, joins into the main... Uh, ocean here where it feeds uh, also feeds the Chelsea River which is this wee bit here and then we looked at the Mystique one that goes from Covenant the whole way down the big one that's coming up later on is the Charleston which runs the whole way round it's gonna be a beefy one it's gonna probably take me at least 30 minutes or so to get through it all which again is pretty awesome now the Marler Queen I have never seen before uh, so she's probably fighting the Algae when you get into the area uh, so that's a pretty neat thing to see. Uh, oh, we have a wee collection of Marlurks sitting by the lakeside. If I find any new unmarked locations, this will be a pretty, pretty awesome addition. Nope, it just seems to be a little, a little spawn for them at the bottom of Lynn Woods. Perfect sort of territory for them. Now, if we swim over to our Breakheart Banks here, we can actually find a uh, little fishing ship that you can access the inside of it. Uh, unlike many ships, this one. It actually has an interior, which again, I think is linked to a distress signal, so let's go into the fishing boat cabin. After a surprisingly long load time for the size of the cell, uh, you can find the ham radio that you can turn off and it'll stop the uh, distress signal. There's a sea captain's hat and a cooler. I'm wondering what does the sea captain's hat give you? Two endurance. Hey, that's a pretty good buff to your health. And a yardstick. Awesome. Alright, let's head back out. And next up, we are going to cross paths with a few fishermen, or fisherwomen, I'm not too sure what they were. Oh, melons. suppose we are at the bottom of Breakheart Banks. Uh, you probably will be fired upon by super mutants at this point. They uh, don't like you prowling about their little territory here. Uh, they're a little defensive about their farm. Now, if we hop across, we can find these two fishermen. I'm going to go with fishermen. I'm not too sure with the skeletons, but... Yeah, we'll go with that. The cool thing is, this is not a pier. This is actually the rear trailer, where they've kind of built the makeshift pier, which I think was just a really cool idea. Like, look at that. It's, it's just class. Now, if we do drain away all the waters, you can see there are wreckages of tires, cars, 
and uh, just fishing vessels. I suppose the reason the rivers are so radiated is because a lot of these vehicles, of course, were powered by, uh, by atomic energy. So, you know, their their cores are de- decaying directly into, you know, the river. You only thought leaving like a, a diesel, gasoline, petrol, whatever one you want to use. See, I kind of swap between US and UK metrics, but... Uh, Yeah, whichever one, if you dump it in the water and it leaks, you know, coolant and it leaks, you know, oil and all the nasty stuff that is in uh, a car, of course, it does lead to uh, a bit of uh, environmental problems for the river. Now, if we do climb up the hill here, we can find yet another military convoy. This one was carrying some APCs and some robots. Colonel Mr. Gutsy is up here. I don't think this is one that has power armor, but I'm always open to the suggestion that there may be some. Nope. Nope, but we do have an Assault Tron Dominator. And see, when you replace hands with, uh, you know, like saw blades, it gets pretty terrifying pretty quickly. I'm nearly sure this is one of the only convoys that doesn't have power armor nearby. I'm going on a limb and saying that. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. You can let the way APC on top of the trailer. But at my uh, playing this at 120 FPS to keep the recording... Uh, from dropping out uh, frame-wise, because we all know this game was brilliantly optimized uh, for uh, this. That's why the next-gen update, I can't wait for it. I was going to do the 100% playthrough. Um, well, I may have actually started it by now, but I am technically waiting for the update, because I do want it to be pretty optimized uh, before I get stuck into it. Now, I'm going to drain this away once again. I, just lots of debris covering uh, the whole riverbed. You saw that car drop, didn't you? That has to be one of the most amusing things about Fallout, is just every so often a car will randomly fall from the sky. Or the freeway, to be more precise. So yes, uh, someone did point out in my video about Drumlin Diners, it's like, ah, oh, what about the one near the slog? Well, funny enough, this is actually not a Drumlin Diner. It's just a diner. There's no sign or anything, and it's not... Uh, listed on the wiki or not listed anywhere as a Drumlin Diner. I think this was just a general layout of uh, of a diner building. You know, it would have been cool if they could have threw a wee different bit of, of colour or something into it. But whilst we're at the slog, we may as well visit the little... I, I used to think these were diving boards, but obviously the water doesn't come up close enough. So, of course, they are more for sunbathing. I've never seen a facility like this in person. I do know they exist, but I've... I've yet to ever see one so yeah uh the rest of the slog there and uh oh there's a wee bus i always like to look in the buses we have a brilliant theory on why some of them are completely empty with no seats so because the war was ramping up um they they kind of stripped some of the buses so they could carry supplies um you know crates and all it would make sense and that they ripped the leather seats out and you know, all the metal, maybe for the war effort, and then they would use them as a makeshift sort of van truck thing. Uh, this week, car park overgrown with mutated ferns. All right, run across. That looks like something in the water, doesn't it? That actually looks like a, like a marlark. No, oh, it's tires. Nothing like being bamboozled by uh, some tires. All right, let's uh, climb up the freeway here because we've got a few things just dotted across. This one has to be one of my favourite locations. It's uh, a load of raiders are dead in their bus. Um, where obviously the death claw has killed all of them. As he very gracefully glitches up the road. Uh, <laughs> is there anything on that boat there? I never... Uh, two sunken boats. Uh, no entry to them though. Uh, yeah, going up here you can usually find a few bodies. They do despawn if you visit the area and you leave. But there's plenty of food. Of course, you run the risk of having to deal with this guy outside. Uh, he's a mythic one for me, so uh, yeah, that's an added uh, problem. Now, I'm not deviating too much from the river per se, but there is a stream that runs into it, so technically that counts to me as a river. So, or part of the river. Oh! What? I have no AI detection off. What is this? What? What is this? That counts as a new unmarked location. Rad Scorpion attack. I'm going to reload it on a different save and see if I can get them to pop up. Because between the falling car and the Scorpios... Is there, is there like supplies here or something? Is there, is there anything of value here? No? They just popped out to say hello. Well, welcome to the video, Scorpios. 
Uh, if we carry on, the river kind of dissipates over here. I know it's a fair wee chunk away, but I actually thought this was much closer. Because uh, I have a lot of unmarked locations are kind of mapped in my head. So yes, here's a wee pond that I'm sure at some point meets the Saugus River. And if you carry on, you can find a little suitcase and skeleton here that uh, normally has some neat items. So uh, I thank you for uh, your service here. And uh, we can jog our way back past the little rad scorpion attack. I don't think that's a random encounter. Because I don't think random scorp... I know random scorpions pop up all the time. But uh, I think that they seem like they're fixed there. So what I would normally do to explore, like, or to say this is an unmarked location. Oh, a few mercenaries. Oh, yeah, we're at the Parsons State of Insane Asylum. Isn't that where we are? Yeah. So we've kind of... We went down here... Did that wee bit. Parsons Creamery. There, there's just, uh, if you don't know what's up there, it's like a wee lake with a Marlurk King normally about. So uh, be careful if you're up there. We'll head a wee bit further towards the slog again because I want to go up onto the freeway to show you a few things up above from the river. But yeah, so in order to catalogue that wee scorpion thing, I'll load it on several saves just to guarantee that they always pot, like jump out at that point. Then, of course, I'll give the location a name. Uh, add it to the spreadsheet you can find in the description of all my videos. It's like the third link um, It's for the uh, the series where it's like two or three videos um, It also has all the the different sections of map what DLC it is not that there's any DLC just yet uh, So that is definitely an interesting thing if I do say so myself if you want to check that out feel free It's always in the description as is all my socials. So this is the hanging truck. It's got a uh, pretty decent amount of loot, like really good loot, but the only way up here is via jetpack. There is no jet jumping that will reach this location for you, so jetpack is required, and yes, you can get jetpacks. A lot of people don't seem to know that, so I'm probably going to do a video on how you make a jetpack in Fallout 4. As with the river, if it continues on, there's plenty of blood leaf, debris, just lots of things going on. Uh, a bridge where there's normally a bit of a random encounter at one side or another. Um, let's see, we've passed the slog. This is Saugus Ironworks, yes, we are going to carry on past. Kind of splits off. Above is the Hub City Auto Wreckers. Oh. Not gonna lie. Pretty funky place for one random car. Anything in it? No? I would have loved a lot more extreme out of the way, like, loot. Like, there should have just been, like, just one item on here that just would have... It would have made you jump off from the freeway, get into the car and grab a single item. And it would have been like, why? A lot of people would be like, why? What's the point? There are, there are extremes amongst us, I suppose, including myself at this point. Um, that love that sort of thing. So as it joins the river, you can see a few of the pipes here. It goes around to Brahman Island, which is just north of Finch Farm, if my memory serves me correct. Yes, yes it is. A few tractors, things lying around here. You can also find the lunch spot for the ironworks up here. A little wee, wee lunch spot. You can even get some lunch whilst you're here. Lovely rad storm has rolled in, and that kind of... That will be a little useful when we reach our final destination. Now, as the river joins in, Finch Farm will be on your right. You'll actually want to head east towards this little pump station. It's nicknamed the Vitali Pump Station. And inside, it's got a legendary weapon that some of you may or may not have ever seen before called the Gainer. It's a flaming revolver, so let's have a look at it. Oh, yes. So... In order to open this door, which is inaccessible, you need a code. Pressing these buttons generates numbers on the screen here. The code, of course, is 0451. Now, there is no zeros. There's only tens. So it's actually the number 10. 4, 5, 1. Boom. So uh, 10, 4, 5, 1 gets you. Suppose you see the one there, so 10... Four, five, one, you know. It, but I'll be honest, it's tricky enough. When you realize there is no zeros, you can make the connection that it's a 10. Uh, but yeah, bear, and always remember, forgotten meters measure no radiation. And if we carry on in, we can pick up the gainer. Look at this bad boy here. Uh, it takes 44 ammo, and uh, 
yeah, it's pretty awesome. There's also an industrial trunk and a fusion core for the taking. If you want a wee reminder where it is, near Hub City Auto, Rector's Lynn Pier Parking. And uh, I'm going to show you one last thing. I could have kept at this for ages because it's pretty fun and I do enjoy unmarked locations, as you can possibly tell. But once you arrive to the top here, uh, you can find this little house that contains uh, a teddy bear normally sitting on the chair. Don't know where Teddy's gone to, uh, but once you... Oh, no, no. Teddy's over here, if I'm correct. Yep, Teddy is here. When you go over, it does spawn a few raiders that'll kind of pop out, and uh, they will try and kill you. Now, there's one last thing that can usually spawn here. It's a very common spawn. The gunner tank. This is one of the few tanks that you can see in the game. The idea of this random encounter is to give you an impression that these things are operable to a certain degree and uh, the gunners have clearly figured out how not only to use one but to drive it about. The only sad thing is that you never see it driving nor do anything. Would have been cool if the turret would have turned and fired at you. Like this could have been an extremely formidable boss and you would have had to do something where you climb on top and drop a grenade into the hole. That would have been funny. So yeah, that's uh, pretty neat. We've covered quite a lot of locations along the Saugus River. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below as always. Thank you to all my channel members. See you in the next one.